If you clicked on this video, you probably understand that we are at the cusp of something truly technologically transformational. Artificial intelligence is taking the world by storm and is going to change the way that businesses operate going forward. Companies, both large and small, they are scrambling to implement the latest AI solutions to try and get one step ahead of their competition in what is an extremely competitive global world that is innovating very quickly. Take a look at ChatGPT. This is probably the most democratized example we have of AI. Released on the 30th of November, 2022, it surpassed 1 million users within five days. As of today, July 2024, we are now at over 180 million users. That to me signifies transformation. So where does that leave us as investors? People often ask me, H, which artificial intelligence stocks are you holding in your portfolio? Well, today I'm going to tell you about three and not any three. These three stocks, I believe, have an extreme extremely high probability of benefiting hugely from the artificial intelligence revolution and they are already proving that within their quarterly results. Let's get into it. Quick disclaimer, this is not financial advice. Please go ahead and do your own research and also this is unlike a lot of my videos where I'm literally just doing a quick fire on these three companies. I'm not going to explain the thesis in full. I'm just going to get you introduced to some of the reasons behind why I've invested in these companies. And also, they're not cheap. They're not some undiscovered company at the, at the bottom of the New York Stock Exchange. Not at all. These companies are talked about hugely. And that's another reason why I'm not too overly concerned on doing a deep dive on them because there is a lot of public information out there for investors to go away and do their own research. Now, this first stock is Taiwan semiconductor manufacturing company. Now, just a little bit of clarity. NVIDIA and AMD, they do not make their own chips. What I mean is they do not produce, actually physically produce the hardware. What they do is they design and they distribute and they own the intellectual property for that hardware. But they outsource all of the manufacturing to effectively one big foundry. TSMC is pretty much the prime manufacturer for most of both NVIDIA and AMD's products. And they hold a 61% market share of the global semiconductor foundry market. Not only this, but they probably have a high market share of all of the really new innovative products, right? The three nanometer chips, the two nanometer chips. And my basic thesis on TSMC is NVIDIA is the market leader in GPUs, intelligent processing units that are basically powering AI right now. Other players are trying to catch up. They're not doing very well. NVIDIA has an estimated 88% market share of this market. There are other companies that have exposure to AI like Broadcom and Arm. Both of these use TSMC as their main manufacturer as well. So therefore, TSMC is effectively a picks and shovels play on artificial intelligence infrastructure. And considering that they have almost a monopoly in this space, compared to the other companies that design AI hardware that are growing quickly, TSMC's stock is actually at a reasonable valuation. I started buying this at about $90 this time last year. The shares have done very well. They've doubled since then. Again, I'm not saying that the stock is ridiculously cheap. But what it does do is it gives you picks and shovels exposure to AI. Now in their Q2 results reported recently, TSMC showed revenue up 33% year on year. And many research analysts are saying due to the huge demand for the type of innovative AI chips that TSMC makes to all the companies aforementioned, they're expected to hike prices further this year. This is interesting because over the past few years, TSMC's gross margins have already traded upward. And I think this is indicating both huge amounts of demand, so TSMC can command those price hikes, but also because of how difficult and how capital intensive it is to not only build foundries, but build the kind of foundries that are needed to create three nanometer and two nanometer chips. This means that TSMC can do it at a lower per unit cost and thus continue to drive efficiency on the gross margin side. If you think about the fact that this company has a near monopoly on AI manufacturing, this is a no brainer in the long-term artificial intelligence revolution. It is worth mentioning the T for TSMC begins with Taiwan and this stops a lot of people from investing in the company. All I will say is that if China invade Taiwan to the point where TSMC's foundries are damaged, uh, this is going to have worse ramifications for the world than just the share price of TSMC going down. We would be pretty screwed without them and it's such a big thing to happen. Yeah, if it did happen, then you've got bigger problems to worry about than just the share price of 
TSMC going down. Just to clarify on what I mean by that, without TSMC, Nvidia can't design and distribute chips. Without Nvidia designing and distributing chips, the big cloud providers can't buy these chips and therefore cloud infrastructure will cease to run. And it's just not a nice position for the world to be in. So yeah, if China invades Taiwan in a hostile manner, then we've got bigger things to worry about than the share price of TSMC going down. The next big AI stock that I'm invested in is Palantir. Palantir's plan for AI was, quote, just take the whole market. Now, there is a lot of content about Palantir on YouTube. Some investors have their whole channel dedicated to it. So I'm not going to talk about it much. But if you want an explanation in, in really plain English about what they do is effectively they're a big data company. So companies have unstructured data that's everywhere. Palantir uses their AI to basically organize all of that data into one central platform. This platform builds like a digital twin or like a copy or a model, a virtual model of a company's entire operations. And then from there, Palantir uses its own proprietary AI and machine learning to analyze all of this data and to help a company get more efficient and make decisions. That's Palantir in a nutshell. Now, if you purely look to Palantir based off their total revenue growth rates and their sort of gross profit ratios and price to earnings ratios. Yes, they do look expensive, but this is the thing to understand is when you look at what is going on with their commercial products, that is growing a heck of a lot faster. So Palantir, historically, they had a lot of government revenue. They still do have that government revenue. There are only so many Western oriented governments that Palantir wants to work with, and that revenue can only grow so fast. On the commercial side, there's a lot more businesses than governments, right? And if you look at their commercial revenue, it's up 40% year on year but actually so it's 150 million now it was 131 million last quarter so they've actually got us commercial revenue growth up 14.5 percent on the quarter and when you annualize that that comes to 74.5 percent so that is really showing when they advertise their product which they have been doing through ai boot camps they can sell it and grow it extremely quickly and what i like to think about when i think of palantir is because they've got all of these nine figure military contracts and and because they've got that 330 million pound contract with the National Health Service to help improve its efficiency, that is a huge contract. So if Palantir can do that for the NHS, think about how powerful it is and think about what it can do for businesses. So my whole theory on Palantir is that despite the ratios being quite expensive compared to the total growth rates today, if you think about what, if the NHS is going to award them 330 million, just one contract, think about what it can do for large enterprises. Palantir is starting to entrench yourself within those enterprises, show their customers really what it can do, and the demand is starting to surge. A lot of people like to say that Palantir, they are the software to NVIDIA's hardware. And whilst there are other players in this space, it seems that Palantir has a really, really powerful AI system that is helping companies maximize their efficiency. The third company I would like to talk about, and this one really needs no introduction, is Microsoft. Now, Microsoft have their fingers in a lot of pies. And when you synthesize all these pies together, you get an unstoppable machine. What do I mean by that? So firstly, Azure, Microsoft's cloud, is the second largest cloud provider in the world. And recently, they have been gaining market share over Amazon Web Services. They have proven over a long period of time, extremely fast cloud growth. And cloud is incredibly important because AI requires so much data that it's just catalyzing the shift. More and more cloud, all of that data needs to be stored somewhere, right? And that is ultimately what cloud infrastructure is. It's the storing of this data that is being generated generated by artificial intelligence. So that is one massive positive when it comes to Microsoft. The second big thing, I mentioned ChatGPT earlier, right? So Microsoft made these big investments in OpenAI. We do have breaking news just moments ago. Microsoft is to boost its investment in ChatGPT maker OpenAI. This is an entirely a surprise. Some folks last week were talking about the idea that this could happen. This will be the third investment in about three years. They also made investments in 2019 and 2021. Right now, they are considering an investment of $10 billion. But instead of getting equity from OpenAI, they basically got the right to exclusively use OpenAI's large language model, ChatGPT, for its commercial use. So no other company like Google or Amazon can actually implement OpenAI's large language model. They have to sort of build their own. And they've got a very, very close partnership with OpenAI. You think about OpenAI, this company beat Google to releasing an LLM. You remember when Google's LLM first was released? 
released to the public. It was called Google Bard. I remember watching these tests done between ChatGPT and Google Bard and seeing which one was smarter. And you know what? Even though ChatGPT was released first, it was much smarter and it made Google's AI look laughable. It really, really did. So OpenAI is no joke. Honestly, they should be taken seriously. I think everyone's taking them seriously, right? 180 million users in 18 months or so. It's crazy. So the fact that Microsoft have got such a deep partnership with them is incredibly good news for Microsoft. Now, what else do Microsoft have? Microsoft have a huge huge sprawling software empire and almost any company that i analyze in the SaaS space they are always competing with microsoft whether it was ui path in robotic process automation or zoom video in unified communications as a service or gitlab in the devops industry microsoft is everywhere and what it can do is it can get microsoft copilot but what it can do is it can use its own proprietary ai along with open ai's ai to help make using all of that software software so much easier and thus creating a snowball where more people use Microsoft products that gives the AI more data to be trained off the AI becomes better and Microsoft just takes control of that market you know they've got exposure on the hardware side through their cloud infrastructure they've got exposure on the software side Microsoft is a formidable company that I believe stands to benefit hugely from artificial intelligence over the coming decade so thank you very very much for watching everybody as I said I like to take into account value a lot when I'm investing and these companies, particularly since when I bought them, they are not as cheap as they once were. But I think taking a very long term mindset on artificial intelligence and which companies have a very, very high degree of benefiting the most. I don't think that you will go massively wrong with these three. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. See you in the next one.